The stories tell that a long time ago in a very distant kingdom, there was not a king, but an emperor, who as we all know, is much more than just a king. This emperor was very presumptuous. He liked to always be in the latest fashion to always be chic. Those who are chic are always in the latest fashions, customs and uses that others say. For example, it is fashionable to wear a hat. People who are chic immediately buy a hat. What is fashionable to wear a cape? People who are chic immediately buy a cape. That it is fashionable to put an aubergine on their ear well. Chic people immediately put an aubergine on their ear. Well, following that way of living, the emperor and the entire palace entourage always wanted to be up to date with the customs, because everyone in the palace wanted to imitate the emperor and be as elegant, modern, and chic as he was. Of course the emperor, who is much more than a king, simply had to be better than any of his subjects. When it became fashionable, to wear a flower on the lapel of the jacket or shirt, the emperor brought the most beautiful and largest flower that had ever been seen. He sent his pages throughout the kingdom to look for the flower that no one else had. When wearing a wig became fashionable, the emperor wore not just one, but two of the most beautiful and lustrous wigs that anyone had ever seen. Even once it became fashionable to wear rings on the fingers and the emperor sent the best jewelers to make him the biggest rings they had ever made to be the best of all, the most elegant and the most chic for that, it was the emperor who is much more than a king, just plain. Of the many fashions that were in that country, it is a pity that reading never became fashionable, because by reading many things are learned and I say this, because if they had read, what happened would not have happened. What? What happened? Now I tell you. It turns out that every time the emperor had his birthday, a great party was held in the palace and then they all went out and parade through the streets so that the most humble citizens contemplated their emperor and all those of the palace with the richest finery they had. Following that custom, everyone wanted to be the best dressed and chicest they could. The dressmakers and dressmakers, seamstresses, and seamstresses, tailors and tailors of the kingdom were busy weaving, sewing, designing the most beautiful and elegant outfits for that party. Of course, everyone asked them to be very cautious about telling anyone what suit or dress or cape they were making. Because everyone in the palace wanted to be the most chic and innovative. Of course the emperor, who is much more than a king, simply had to be the best of the best, the most of the masses and the most chic of all the sheiks. That year the emperor was desperate with his advisors, he had three, one the oldest who consulted everything, another the middle one who consulted almost everything and another the small one who consulted only a few things. Well, he was desperate because all the designs of suits, capes, leggings, Shirts that they showed him did not convince him, but nothing, nothing. That birthday had to be different from all the previous ones. The advisors searched and searched, always in secret so that no one would find out about the emperor's plans, through all the streets of the city, towns, and villages, talking to anyone who knew how to sew, weave or meant to see what they had ideas for the emperor to be the best of the best. They overheard the circumstances and concerns that the emperor had for his birthday, some tricks called Florido and Hortensio, at least that was the name they gave, to know what they were really called. Florido and Hortensio were real cheers who went from town to town swindling people. Hearing the matter of the emperor's suit and his concern, they devised a plan, of course to deceive and defraud the emperor himself because neither one nor the other knew how to sew or anything like that. They appeared at the gates of the palace with an enormous trunk and requested an audience. Hearing the advisors that they were famous cloth dealers and consummate tailors, they immediately warned the emperor that, eager as he was to wear the best clothes, he made them enter at once. Everyone in the palace saw Florido and Hortensia enter with their enigmatic trunk and they all wanted to know what fabrics or costumes they would bring inside. 
The emperor had the room vacated so that his secret would not be known. What are you bringing? Me? Asked the emperor. Majesty, Florito began to speak. In our travels through distant lands we have heard of your elegance, magnificence, and great delicacy to dress you. Oh, exclaimed the emperor, I did not know that my taste for good dress was so famous. You don't talk about anything else, right Hortensio? Please, answered the aforementioned, yes the talk of all kingdoms, in the country beyond, in the kingdom further here, even in distant Churlandia. You are the envy of all monarchs, counts, dukes, and marquises. Oh, said the emperor in amazement. Traveling through these worlds we have learned about your famous birthday and how elegant and spectacular are the designs that your court and yourself wear on those occasions, Florido told him. The emperor if he grew ass. These two spoke and praised his vanity. Knowing your habit of always looking impeccable, Florito continued speaking, We bring you something that no one has ever seen in any kingdom except the one. From which we bring these fabrics that will make you look like you've never seen majesty, right Hortensio? Please, what fabrics? What fabrics do we bring in this trunk? Hortensio said very proud. Florido made the move to open the trunk but he quickly closed it. The emperor had already opened his eyes to explore the wonders that those dealers brought him, but when he saw how they closed the trunk again, he was annoyed. But, let's see, said the emperor a little offended by the attitude of the so-called tailors, but what experience do you have? Florido began to speak, experience? You ask us about our experience? Yes, said the emperor. I ask you about your experience. Have you dear monarch heard of the Queen of Sheba? Florido asked him. Well, no, replied the emperor. The counselors looked puzzled when they heard that name. They did not know that queen either. Tell him, tell him, Hortensio, what the Queen of Sheba thought of our work. The Queen of Sheba, what suit? Your Majesty. What suit did we make for her, son, please, and then those, oh how was her dress, enchanted, in song. Do you happen to know King Solomon? Florido continued speaking. And 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 no, I don't. Know that one either, said the emperor and looked at his advisors who made a face as if they were hitting his head to see if that name sounded familiar to them. Tell him. Tell Hortensio what King Solomon thought of our work. The beloved King Solomon, a cape, oh what a cape we made him, he congratulated us, well astonished at our doing, he kissed our hands, said that he had never been so elegant as when we made him that cape, what a cape. Do you know for saying Queen Cleopatra? Well, said the Emperor somewhat uncomfortably, I don't know that one of hers either, and he looked angrily at his advisors who did not know what to do because they did not know any of those monarchs that the tailors said. Tell him Hortensio. Cleo, sorry, Queen Cleopatra, she kept us in her arms. She pampered us, we made a whole trousseau for her nuptials, he did not want us to leave the palace, he even got very angry when we told him we had to leave. And to the stunned king? Yes the emperor answered immediately dash we do know him he said while he looked at the advisors well what a shame Florido answered him precisely for that we could not do any work because the same day we had an audience with him was the day that he was astonished and the poor thing was astonished a real shame Florito pretended to sigh dash finally Florito half opened the trump butt pretending to be what? He thought he said, You must know majesty that these fabrics are made with great care by the monks of the high mountains and they take years to weave a single meter, since they take the threads from the nests of some birds that cut with their beaks some reeds that only grow in the on the banks of the river near the monastery, so delicate are the threads that the birds cut, which are finer than human hair. 
Imagine the patience and dedication that these monks have to have to be able to make the weft of the cloth. The threads being so fine and delicate, in addition to their fragility they have. The virtue that with this cloth the clever man is immediately distinguished from the fool, whom he knows of the one who does not know, come on, that they will make you see majesty, who is a donkey or a wise man in your kingdom. Saying this, Florida looked at the counselors. Oh, said the emperor amazed at such wonder, and how is that possible? He asked. For some strange reason, Florido continued speaking, when someone approaches to see the cloth, the fool is unable to see it majesty, Bach. More than one king will have discovered in this way how much of a fool surrounded him. The emperor was amazed at everything Florido was telling him, the advisors looked at each other, a little puzzled. Come, said Florido. Come majesty and see for yourself if what I say is not true. The emperor approached the trunk and Florido opened it, but he stood between the advisors and the trunk so that only the emperor could see the contents. The emperor approached and of course the trunk was totally empty, doubtful, and because he did not want to look foolish he was doubting a bit and in the end he said, Mr. Taylor, I am amazed at what you bring me. The emperor, doubtful of what he was not seeing, sent for the minor advisor. In good? asked the emperor. The minor advisor did not see anything, but since he did not want to look foolish either, he exclaimed, Beautiful, it is the most beautiful fabric I have ever seen. Come here, he said, pointing to the medium advisor. He approached and because he did not seem foolish either, he said, Majesty, but what a wonder of cloth they bring you. It is of a subtlety and grace never before seen in the palace. The senior advisor finally came and evidently he didn't want to be a fool either, so he also praised the beauty of the cloth that was supposedly inside the trunk. Florito and Hortensio looked at each other and immediately closed the trunk immediately asking that they be provided with a room and that no one bother them in their task of leaving the new suit for the emperor. The news of the cloth and the tailors ran like water throughout the palace. It was all whispers, rumors, and gossip. Some said they had seen the fabric, others that they had touched it and that they had never felt something so delicate in their hands. Of course no one wanted to be stupid and although no one saw absolutely nothing at all, everyone pretended they were seeing her. The news of the prodigious cloth passed from the walls of the palace and spread throughout the kingdom and everyone wanted to come to see the emperor wear such a wonder. Florido and Hortensio were living sumptuously, they ate and drank freely, they walked through the gardens. They attended the banquets and they did not lack the opportunity to tell everyone about their travels through the kingdoms that were invented. From time to time they pretended to be very busy treating the fabric, cutting it, stretching it, and ironing it so it wouldn't wrinkle a bit. The emperor came to try on the new suit and although they did not put anything on him because he did not seem silly at all, he said take me a little from here. I feel a little loose there, Bach, now. Yes, what hands you have. Of course, on the Emperor's birthday, they pretended they were putting on his shirt and buttoning it, putting on pants made with that magnificent fabric and adjusting them, putting a long jacket up to his heels so that not get dirty when the monarch walked to show off his new suit and finally, the cape that was tied with eyelets on the edges of the jacket, as it was such a delicate fabric. It seemed that he was not wearing anything. Oh, said Florito, Majesty, you have to take a portrait with this suit. Hortensio even pretended to cry with emotion when he saw his finished work of him. Your Majesty, you are our best suit. Florito, we will always remember it. It has been an exceptional job. The Emperor in his underpants began to walk around the entire palace, everyone was amazed, 
Everyone praised the elegance. Everyone had some beautiful word for the monarch. After wandering around the palace he paraded through the streets of the city. It is a bit chilly, thought the emperor, but of course the fabric is so delicate and subtle that even though it is beautiful it will not be used to show off in winter. All the inhabitants of the kingdom were contemplating the emperor walking in his underpants through the streets and all of the palace behind. No one said anything, because no one wanted to pass for a fool, but the villagers looked at each other, and either whittled their faces, or whispered, or half smiled. Everything went well until passing in front of a child he screamed from the rooftops. But if the emperor is naked. At first a huge silence flooded the street in first one, then another and then everyone began to laugh hilariously. The emperor is naked. Look at her belly. Luckily, it occurred to him to put on panties otherwise the little bird would teach us. And the laughter was increasing. The jokes were increasing in tone and the laughter was becoming louder. The emperor, surrounded by his guards, returned to the palace and it took them a long time to see him again in the streets. As for Florido and Hortensio, they were never heard from again, at least in those lands, who they will be fooling around those worlds. And this story is told as it happened. For this reason it is very important to read, consult things and not be fooled. It is preferable to ask if you do not know something than not seem ready without being.